Hello and welcome to SAE Tomorrow Today. I'm your host, Grayson Brulte. On today's episode, we're absolutely honored to have Dr. Ashley Demeet, Chief Technology Officer, Carbon Revolution. On today's episode, Ashley and I discuss the benefits of lightweight carbon fiber wheels. We hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to the podcast, Ashley. Thanks, Grayson. It's great to be here. I'm excited to have you here because technologies that are born on the racetrack are awesome. Technologies that are born on the racetrack are having a positive influence on society throughout throughout history. So w- well done. Super excited to have you here. Before we get into all the, the fun stuff, which is known as racing, you're developing carbon fiber wheels. I'd love to know, what are the benefits of lightweight carbon fiber for car manufacturers? Yeah, well, fundamentally, um, carbon fiber wheels are an efficiency technology, and we can use that efficiency for different things, uh, for different purposes, um, with different applications. So the first the first use of the technology was obviously a performance use. So fitting that lightweight wheel to a, a high performance or racing vehicle yields lap time decreases, acceleration increases, braking distance reduction, and all of those uh, good things that come with reducing weight. So that's, I guess, one of the primary benefits of the technology. But turning that around, you can also use the same physics to reduce fuel consumption or increase range. So it's um, really up to the application as to, to where you direct that efficiency uh, improvement. Well, let's start in a, on acceleration. I like to drive cars fast and have the privilege of driving uh, on several racetracks. You know, over 50,000 carbon revolution wheels are on the road today. They could be found on legendary vehicles such as the Ford GT and the Ferrari F8 Spider. Well done. In your opinion, why did the iconic brand of Ford and Ferrari choose Carbon Revolution? They probably didn't have much of a choice because we were, we were the only uh, company originally that, that were able to solve all of the problems associated with making wheels out of carbon fiber. So the relationships with those car companies goes back many, many years before we started production. So we were, um, I, I suppose, responsible as a business for, um, for creating the technology and bringing it to market over the last 15 years since the the company was founded. Solve problems. What problems are there before you solve them with carbon fiber wheels? I I suppose when I talk about the problems to solve, that a wheel has to to do many things, as many functions, I suppose, and um, there's lots of challenges with getting a carbon fiber wheel to work. And over the years when we were developing the core product technology, um, that did take a long time to solve problems like... Um, How do you attach that carbon fiber wheel to the vehicle effectively so it can never come off unless you want it to? How do you make sure that the air is held in the tire when the pressure vessel that you're creating is something that's subjected to impact loads, fatigue loads, you know, really high stresses from cornering and uh, also, you know, brake rotors, which might be a thousand degrees Celsius, just a couple of inches from that pressure vessel which obviously generate a, a lot of thermal load on the, the carbon fiber wheel itself. So lots of those engineering fun challenges that we had to solve, um, along with things that are more you know environmental challenges like um, how do we get the paint to stick to the wheel for the full life of the vehicle? Um, how do we make sure that the paint doesn't fall off when it's exposed to UV radiation that a lot of people familiar with carbon fiber would... Um, see has happened in in history so yeah all of those challenges are not insignificant and all rolled into um to one product you see you have these challenges and then it's okay you have challenges and you're my favorite project product you go through testing what sort of testing do your wheels go through before they're delivered to your customers yeah lots of testing so through the design process with the customers we define the validation program for the wheels that starts for us with a virtual phase. So through it during the virtual design using finite element analysis is pretty important. And that analysis where we virtually model um, a lot of the impact and fatigue um, and pressure events for the wheel to make sure that the design is, um, is robust. And then once we produce initial prototypes, like with any automotive technology, we go through a, a series of lab tests and luckily the wheel industry is quite mature at a component level for testing because it's a safety critical product so we go through a range of standard impact tests developed by different organizations either uh, industry organizations or the car companies themselves and they will be fatigue based tests or impact tests um, uh, or environmental tests where 
we must pass all, all of those before the wheels are allowed to be put onto a, a prototype vehicle. So we're responsible for all of the design phase, um, all of the lab testing, and then we hand over prototypes to the to the car companies and they complete their vehicle level durability testing. Well, now, staying on the design theme here, there are several vehicles, uh, like the, Ro- the Rolls-Royce Phantom, for example, or the Ghost, the new Cullion, or uh, certain Ferraris that they're, they're hand built. Do you have customers that will call you from the manufacturer and say, Ashley, we like a certain type of wheel. Can you manufacture for us? And then you will build them a bespoke wheel for the bespoke vehicle that's being built? Uh, not so much, Grace. And no, we, we don't. We don't do a lot of that because the cost is quite prohibitive. So the the design phase and the, the manufacture of first prototypes to get to that that point is is a lot of money. Um, so there needs to be sort of volume behind that request to to justify it for for us or for them usually. And so we we have experience in the aftermarket and had a range of wheels before we um, shifted our focus to OEM supply. But it was quite a challenging space because. Everybody wants something different and you've got to be so adaptable. It really becomes uh, quite a frustrating exercise. So we're uh, very focused on OEM supply and and high volume, which is where we feel we can make the most difference, I suppose, have the most impact. For high volume with with OEM relationships, are you looking at the traditional passenger vehicle market as you can reduce weight, you can increase fuel efficiency, especially as we're seeing the price of gasoline globally go through the roof? Yeah, we are. Obviously, as we said before, um, we started in the, the really high-end performance car segment, but that's definitely um, definitely not just success for us. Um, it's awesome and amazing to think that we're supply wheels to Ferrari and Ford and, and things like that for their best, fastest performance cars. But for us, true success is uh, disruption of the of the industry and more uh, widespread adoption of, of the wheels. Um, that's really where we're we're wanting to head and and these days obviously with electric vehicles and the the drive for efficiency and range we think that the the carbon fiber wheels are really solving problems for our customers that um, nobody else can so the weight of the wheel is the second most important weight on the vehicle and that's true for for all vehicles have you or any of your partners done testing around electric vehicles where you put your carbon fiber wheels on there and see does it increase the range have you done any sort of testing around that we haven't done huge amounts of testing to verify that with lots of data but the physics is, is fairly straightforward to suggest that it does make a significant difference so we're working with a number of of our customers now we have four programs in development stages that are for electric vehicles and so no doubt that data to support that will come over time but electric vehicles are a really interesting space. They bring some of the product attributes forward that were sitting in the background um, right to the forefront. So things like noise, vibration and harshness. The carbon fiber wheels uh, transmit less of the noise from the road into the cabin. And when you've got an electric vehicle with no engine noise, the road noise becomes a, a real problem and a, a real annoyance. So carbon fiber wheels can have an impact there in terms of reducing road noise and they can also have an impact in aerodynamics and because you have regenerative braking in most electric vehicles the aerodynamic efficiency actually becomes more important relative to the rotational inertia and we can produce really aerodynamic shapes with carbon fiber wheels for very little weight penalty so when you typically make a, a nice aerodynamic wheel out of aluminium you can of course create that but those wheels with large surface areas tend to weigh a lot and so you then you're fighting against yourself. But with carbon fiber, same as you know, wings in Formula One, which are all made out of carbon fiber, they can be very nice thin elements that are, are there just to do that job of moving air out of the way. So yeah, lots of interesting ways of looking at things and, and different ways which we bring value to different market segments, I suppose. You clearly laid out a lot of value for what carbon fiber wheels are doing today. If you're going to order a vehicle you get to select the different type of wheels do you get do you eventually see that carbon fiber wheels are one of those options when you're selecting your vehicle okay i can get the traditional aluminum wheels or hey for a little bit more i get the, the carbon fiber wheels do you eventually see that how that will be rolled out yeah well that that, that already happens today so if you go onto the uh, ferrari website which i'm sure everybody does all the time to uh, configure their <laughs> configure their vehicle you can um you can select our wheels as one of the options and um yeah, lots of people are obviously doing that. And the same goes for, you know, different configurations. So the GT500 
Mustang track pack came standard with the wheels. So in that configuration, you were buying a package of of technologies, which was called the track pack, and the wheels came as part of that. With the, the Corvette Z06, if you order the Z07 package, the wheels come with that. So different ways of, of doing it, but definitely um, there are examples where you select that, that option and um, the, the car comes with the wheels. I know you're. I know you're biased, but I have to know. You you take a let's say you take a Corvette, you take a Ferrari in the track, and you use traditional wheels, and then you use your carbon fiber wheels. Do you notice a big difference? Yeah, you do. You, you notice it more on the track if you're a performance um, oriented driver for sure, because the steering feel is is very different. The lower rotational inertia, lower steering effort required to turn the corner, and the the less gyroscopic effect has an immediate sensation to you and you're obviously increasing your straight line performance as well but that's that's probably harder to feel but what the things that you do feel are the really the steering um, is, is very obvious to the driver and then the the impact harshness over small bumps on the road that is significantly reduced and you feel that even driving on the road to work and back if you if you drive over a small bump with heavy wheels, that's quite a shock into the vehicle, whereas you drive over it with the light wheels and it's um, far more subtle. So the, things like that you notice really quite obviously. And obviously if you're driving on, on the track flat out, then you're going to see you know, 1.2 to 1.5 seconds reduction in lap time for a 70-second lap. That was sort of the numbers that we, we typically see in those high-end vehicles. So all of the Ferrari track track records these days are, are set on our wheels. So that's pleasing as well. It's more than pleasing. It's the difference between winning the race and losing the race. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's very simple. Numbers. So we, we cover the the traditional consumer passenger car market. We, we've talked about race. And the other market is especially very big in Australia, Class 8 trucks. Are you seeing carbon fiber wheels start to make their way on, onto Class 8 trucks? Uh, not yet, but we definitely um, we definitely see that in in our future and in the future for carbon fiber wheels in general. Uh, different physics are involved, and and it really comes down to um, when we get the cost to a point where the pricing makes sense for a class eight truck, it will just kind of naturally um, flow into that segment. So, <clears throat> saving saving wheel weight um, in trucks is is pretty well known as a as the right thing to do when you look at um, Alcoa wheels. For years, people have been converting their trucks to, to aluminium wheels just because of the economic benefits of doing so. So you either get increased payload, which is, means you're, you're earning more money because you can put more on the truck because the truck weighs weighs less. So the, the reason to, um, to buy is pretty straightforward. The price just has to be at the right level where it makes um, economic sense and um, and that will happen, I'm sure. So same with other vehicles like that, like buses. And yeah, it's uh, it's it's really just a matter of time and part of the, the technology journey, I suppose, and the rollout of it, just like anything um, over the years. Um, it takes time to um, adopt new technology. To me, it makes sense from an, a, a cost economic standpoint if you could pay a premium for the wheels, but then in, say, 12 months, 18 months, the fuel savings alone covers the price of the wheels because then after you you repay the wheels, you're going to have that increased profit. And that makes a lot of sense. It'll be interesting to see when these large trucking like a Schneider or a Warner or a JB Hunt starts implementing your thing. And then uh, Craig Harper or somebody says, oh, well, look, look at the fuel savings. Look what we're doing. Okay, let's put carbon fiber wheels across our entire fleet. That will be a really interesting uh, way to look at that. We'll go down a, a notch here in terms of weight, but the most popular car in America is the SUV. Are there benefits to putting carbon fiber wheels on the traditional SUV? It's just going around town, not going off road and doing nothing fancy, just and people enjoy driving them. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I think it's pretty similar to the benefits that I talked about for electric vehicles, um, and obviously SUVs are heading that same direction from a powertrain perspective. Um, so the things like range extension, noise reduction, aerodynamic efficiency, they all that's all going to play a, a role in an SUV. But the interesting thing is, is as SUVs turn to electric is they get really, really heavy. And you probably have seen that in some of the vehicles that are getting released. And um, it's really important for the car manufacturers to keep those vehicles under certain, certain weights so that they remain in the class of vehicles that they are intended. So if 
<clears throat> if an SUV or something, for example, went above eight and a half thousand pounds, it changes the class of vehicle, which um, which can't happen for the the car manufacturers. So, um, in in some cases, we've seen um, huge interest in adopting the carbon fiber wheel technology just to make sure that the vehicle doesn't exceed a certain class weight limit in the first incarnations of, of those vehicles. So interesting reasons um, to adopt, I suppose, when you, you know, in that particular case, it's not because you're seeking out fractions of a second on a lap time, you're actually um, trying to solve a problem in a pretty creative way. And so, you know, we might be offering a, you know, a 50 kilogram or a 100 pound saving in that instance to a vehicle by just bolting on four or some in that case five wheels to the vehicle including the spare so when you when a wheel is you know 24 inches in diameter and um, might weigh 60 pounds in uh, in metal when we can nearly halve that in, in carbon fiber wheels those numbers stack up pretty significantly when there's especially when there's five five wheels on the vehicle you could take a 60 pound wheel and through your technology the carbon fiber essentially cut it in half to 50 percent to 30 pounds is that right yeah we typically we typically say that we can achieve a 45 percent uh, weight saving um, over a, a cast aluminum wheel and we've demonstrated that sort of on a fairly regular basis um, obviously it depends exactly what you're comparing it to and, and how efficient each of the wheel designs are we know that the wheel designs the design of the wheel is is not always driven by weight and performance. It has a, a huge influence for the styling studio as well. So there's lots of swings and roundabouts, but yeah, when things go right for us, we we can achieve forty five percent. That's a tremendous savings, and I, I like that. So the, the racetrack, obviously, you have the heat going around the turns and going into very intense braking. When you're driving an SUV around town, oh, I drove over a curb. I, I bumped into this. Does, does Can the wheel take that, let's just call it everyday traditional damage, or is it more succumb to, oh, I got to drive this very carefully? No, it, it, it can. Um, so, it, and it's, a, it's probably one of the most common questions we get or criticisms of the technology is that they're, surely they're fragile and surely, surely you, you can damage them easily. The reality is that they pass all of the same durability tests as a, the aluminum wheels um, that the manufacturer of the vehicle stipulates. So there's no special considerations for us and no, um, yeah, we don't get an easier level of test to pass or anything like that. So we have to pass all the same durability requirements. Probably the, 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 so, so the actual physics is fine. The challenge for people to get their heads around is at the moment with where the technology is, the wheel costs so much more. Um, so when you do damage it, and if, you know we can damage any wheel, we can destroy any wheel we want if we hit it hard enough or do something that it wasn't designed for. The frustration is that the wheel costs so much to replace. So that's that's really where the um, emotion comes into it for people, um, which is um, obviously one of our big drivers to reduce the cost and make that um, uh, less of a problem for the world. But the other interesting, I guess, example with carbon fiber as a material and how it performs differently when it's designed in different structures is if you look at a formula one vehicle and you look at the um, front wing and aerodynamic elements when when those components hit an object at speed they pretty much disintegrate you would see that on tv where those components obliterate themselves into hundreds of pieces because they're very very thin structures they may be made of one layer of carbon fiber and they're not they're not designed to withstand that event but on the same on the, on the other hand i should say the carbon fiber monocoque chassis with the safety cell that the driver sits inside is essentially made of the same material and you can survive like a you know 150 mile per hour impact into a barrier inside that safety cell because that material and the thickness of it and the durability of it and what it's designed for is designed for that purpose and that's very similar to our wheels so when you when you look at a cut cross section of our carbon fiber wheels, you'll see some parts of the wheel are, you know, say it's like three quarters of an inch thick or, or even more in some places. So there's, um, there's a lot of material that goes into certain areas of the wheel. They're very robust and durable composite components. They're, they're not lightweight and flimsy in terms of when you, when you handle them, you can really feel the, the strength that they will have. So 
that's quite difficult for people to get their heads around, I suppose. We saw at the Grand Prix of Monaco when, when Schumacher flipped over. It was like, whoa, and it crashed into the wall. And he and, and God bless, he got up and he walked away without a scratch. It was the cabin, but you saw the whole rest of the vehicle just fell apart the way it was designed. It says, okay, to me, it's like, that's the power of carbon fiber. It's extremely struck. You're going into a wall at 180, 200 miles an hour, and yet you can walk out without a scratch on your body. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, that's right. So that's... Um I guess design for that purpose, which is the key, and and um, and we take the same approach with carbon fiber wheels. We're designing designing the wheel to meet the durability requirements that it needs to meet as a, a safety critical structure on the vehicle. Wheels are, wheels are very important, so there's no shortcuts taken and and no fr- fragility to them. If that makes sense, it makes a lot of sense. There's there's a group of uh, individuals around the globe that love to buy and restore classic vehicles. I'll give you an example. Uh, a cherished vehicle is the old original Defender, the Land Rover Defender, where there are individuals that will buy the bodies and restore them from the ground up and do a beautiful job. Could they then put carbon fiber wheels on it and then will that last, have a long, let's say, a 20-year lifespan after that vehicle's been restored? Or is there any lifespan of how long carbon fiber wheels can last if they're taken care of and not driving over curbs or doing all sorts of crazy stuff? Yeah, it's a really good question. No, there's, there's no limitations. As I said, they need to pass all the same durability as a, a metal wheel. They're designed to last the life of the vehicle and just like a, a vehicle, and they, they could be restored as well, I suppose, with a new layer of clear coat paint on them. But even so, like as I said at the beginning, they're not susceptible to paint flaking off like in the early days of carbon fiber components on on vehicles, those problems have been solved. So they, they will last for 200,000 miles or 10 years or 20 years or, or whatever the requirement is from the customer. And how about from a technical perspective, how are the wheels manufactured? Um, yeah, that's a good question. And you can see some of that in our YouTube videos. So the wheels are manufactured from, the, we use a resin transfer molding process. So uh, the carbon fiber composites start as, as carbon fiber sheets of fabric or carbon fiber toe from a bobbin and those layers of fabric are all custom made for us in terms of the fiber orientations within the fabrics and the aerial weight of the fabrics so we then um, we cut those fabrics into shapes which are obviously relevant to the design of the wheel and we those shapes are put together and formed into preforms which essentially become sub assemblies for the spokes and components like that and those sub assemblies then get assembled together on an assembly line and the dry fiber preform of the wheel. So essentially the wheel structure with no resin inside it is um, is built up and that becomes our uh, wheel preform. And that wheel preform is uh, put inside very precise steel tools. And then the tools are closed, the tools are sealed up and the air is evacuated and the liquid resin is injected through all the dry fiber structure. So that liquid resin then solidifies uh, with temperature, we cure the resin, um, and then we we demold the wheel, and the wheel structure is then, um, I guess, uh, complete. Goes through various steps after that, a, a post cure process, and various deflash and machining steps and coating steps. But uh, that's that's essentially the the thirty second summary of how a carbon fiber wheel is made. I appreciate that, and for our listeners that that are curious. Carbon Revolution YouTube videos are extremely well done. I found them fascinating. I learned a lot, so I'd highly recommend that um, you check those out. Ashley, we're on SAE tomorrow today, and I want to give mention this because Carbon Revolution, the idea was hatched during a Formula SAE race in Australia as you look for ways to reduce the weight of the vehicle. Could you talk about those early days and how Carbon Revolution was turned into a business from an idea that was incubated on the racetrack, please? Of course, yeah. It's... um. It's probably something that I'm quite proud of, I suppose. So when I was a student studying mechanical engineering at Deakin University, I got, I got involved in the Formula SA team. The first year that I was involved, we produced a, a vehicle which was very heavy and uh, quite slow compared to the rest of the competition. And the following year in 2004, um, a group of us got together and, and decided we needed to rethink the, the design of the vehicle and start from scratch. And We, through that process of really trying to figure out what the most important things to focus on to make the biggest difference, we came up with the idea of uh, making our own wheels. When you're talking about Formula SAE vehicles, 
uh, you know, they weigh, you know, 200 kilograms. So 450 pounds, they're extremely lightweight vehicles and the wheels that you can typically buy off the shelf for those vehicles, you know, they're made for vehicles that might weigh an order of magnitude more than that. So one of the things that we decided to do was to try and make our own wheels and it just so happened that at the university at the time, there was a collaboration with a lot of industry partners in including Boeing and they were doing research on carbon fibre and there was a few PhD students around that, that knew a lot about carbon fibre and um, we thought, oh, I wonder if you can uh, make wheels out of it because it, it still is the best lightweight structural material that you can you can find. And so really the the, the two things, that the, the carbon fibre that was around us and the, the research that was going on and the realisation that the weight of the wheels and the wheels were so important to the vehicle performance. Really, those two things coming together led us down the path of trying to make carbon fiber wheels. And um, and for many years, we wondered why no one else had really done it before. And I think the same reasons that we we came up with for doing it in the first place are the reasons why we're so successful today. And the reason why the car companies are, are really keen on the technology is because it is the second most important weight in the vehicle outside of the tire, because it's rotating mass it's unsprung mass it's 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 steered mass it's it's everything so there's so much more benefit to the vehicle efficiency by reducing mass in the wheel compared to reducing mass in something that's sprung mass like the seat of the vehicle or the chassis or a panel or components like that so there's there's huge benefits to it so those early years and developing the technology for those little formula sa race cars and then Really going from there, and in 2007, we founded the business. There was four of us founding the business. Two of us were students who were involved in the project, and two others were more mentors to the team, and one of the ex-faculty advisors who'd left and um, was keen to do something with the technology. And Yeah, so from that point, um, we founded the business, and it's been growing ever since from a Formula SAE project to four guys in a in a garage so now we we employ 550 people in a 10,000 square meter factory so supplying to Ferrari and Ford and General Motors you've come a long way but I still want to stay on the Formula SAE did carbon fiber wheels ever make it onto the the Formula SAE vehicle yeah they did we we actually had them for 3 years I wouldn't say that we were completely successful with the vehicle itself which is typical of Formula SA and a part of the experience i suppose but um yeah we we developed three evolutions of the wheel over consecutive years and they got better and better each year we took the vehicle from australia to compete in the german competition in 2006 which was an amazing experience we won an innovation award for the wheels in germany at that year so that was um that was nice but um yeah it's, um, it was a lot of fun I fondly remember those times I've had the pleasure. I visited one um, Formula SAE team. Um, I think it was the University of Jacksonville. It was up in Florida. But the passion that that team had of of, of building that that car to go race, and they they lived in the breathe. And I'm really happy to see that you took that passion, built into a business. You're employing 550 people. You're working for some of the most iconic brands of the world with Ford, GM, and Ferrari. If you and your co-founders never had the passion, never went into Formula S, you never said, wait a second, we have to reduce weight, where do you think we'd be today with lightweight carbon fiber wheel market? Would it still be in its infancy and you get noodling here, noodling there? Did you help accelerate that industry? Yeah, I think we did. I mean, uh, I don't think that carbon fiber wheels um, would be where they are today without, without what we've achieved over the last 15 years. So as I said, without wanting to blow our own trumpets too much, but working with the car companies over the last sort of 10 years and um, getting them to a point where they believed in carbon fiber wheels was essentially um, us doing that. So now there's, there's other competitors trying to follow in our footsteps, which is expected and, and totally fine. But in terms of proving that it could be done and launching the first OEM fitments like the the Ford Mustang GT 350R and then the Ford GT and then um, working with Ferrari before that and then the release of the GT probably spurred on the adoption of the technology by Ferrari and, and so the story goes and you go from Mustangs and get to Corvettes because Mustangs have it and yeah I think I think without what we've achieved and I guess our our resilience 
and belief that it could be done, I'm sure we wouldn't be as an industry where we are today. So it's um, it's been a real fun experience. You've got your very own personalized version of Ford versus Ferrari going on. <laughs> oh, I comment on that. I don't have proof that that is actually why things happen, but I like to think it is. Well, it, it, it makes for, for great marketing. You're doing well in the automotive industry. As the company continues to grow and you, you hire more individuals, what other industries are you looking to expand into where carbon fiber and your technology could have a positive impact? Yeah, it's a really good question. Our, our sort of growth strategy beyond automotive wheels, which is a huge market, obviously, is wheels of other, other kinds. So recently, we've been working on a project with the Australian government uh, designing a wheel for the CH-47 Chinook helicopter. So that's a uh, a bit of a long-term project, but it's um, it's something that we've completed the virtual design phase four, and um, that was a really really uh, exciting project. A completely different wheel construction to an automotive wheel, but but really where we see a, a new market that opens up for us in, in aerospace. So you can imagine the weight of a, a wheel on a helicopter is pretty pretty important. Uh, the willingness to pay for weight saving there um, is is fairly significant given they have to beat gravity into submission to fly. So, um, (laughs) so that's, you know, that is a really interesting place. And of course, fixed wing aircraft, similar. So, and then, then moving, like we've already talked about the class eight trucks, I think trucks and heavy vehicles, um, there's a natural fit there, different reasons to buy, but, but lightweight wheels make sense in a lot of places, I guess. So you take a Chinook, when a Chinook lands, if it's in if it's in combat or in a hostile territory, it's landed hard. It's not a very nice, oh, let's do 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 It thing's coming down and it's going to, and the troops are going to get out and away it goes. Is that, so you have the lightweight, but is it also the ability of the carbon fiber to take that heavy impact, another advantage? Yeah, for sure. It's, um, I mean, same with wheels. We'll design the wheel structure to deal with whatever loads it needs to, to load, uh, to, to live with and, the, the, in, interestingly, the Chinook wheel loads are about an order of magnitude greater than any vehicle we've ever worked on from an automotive sense. So it's pretty clear that they do have to deal with some some significant events. And I suppose that's like flying a school bus. That's a, that's a pretty big aircraft. So <laughs> yeah, the wheel, the materials, we, we specify different materials than what we do for automotive just because of the different requirements in that environment. They don't have brake temperatures to deal with, for example, like we do in automotive. So yeah, we can we have the flexibility of changing formulations of different things to get even more benefits, which is uh, which is exciting. It's going to be very interesting to watch as you expand into automotive, you expand into defense, then wherever you go next, perhaps it's you're doing stuff for outer space. It's be very interesting to see how your company grows because you're clearly onto something. You're based in Australia. Do you find benefits to your company of being based in Australia? The, the business obviously started here. All of our customers essentially are uh, offshore, so either in Europe or in, in North America. So there's, there's challenges with being Australian-based from a logistics and supply chain perspective, but also being here means that uh, the protection of our intellectual property has been something that's been fairly straightforward because we're a long way from anywhere and there's not many other competitors locally. So <laughs> that's been a nice advantage. And I suppose similar to the SA, the Formula SAE story, our country is, is quite small. And even when you look at when we used to produce our own Ford and, and GM vehicles here in Australia, the factories that built those vehicles were much smaller than what you will have in, in the United States. And, and as a result, that the people involved and the skills involved in, in running a whole car factory in Australia was done by a smaller group of people who were quite adaptable and and resilient and had to do many things and understand many things as opposed to just focusing on one particular job that they had. So I think that over the time, over the journey, we've employed a lot of those people with automotive skills and experience and the Australian way is is has always been the, the, the can-do attitude and we'll find a way to get it done. And I think that attitude and and willingness to give new things a go has um, held Carbon Revolution in good stead and probably been some of the reason as to why we've been successful after, uh, you know, creating a technology which is um, quite a disruptive one and there was lots of challenges to solve and there still are, quite frankly. Like it's not, um, 
it's not all smooth sailing. There's always new challenges as you grow, but we're we're pretty um, pretty steely, I guess, and um, and not much phases us, and we always find a way. So, I think being in Australia is, is good for promoting that that type of thing, but the supply chain side of it works against us as well. So, we know in the future that we need to we need to produce wheels offshore as well, just to be um, competitive and maintain our advantage that's in our future too yeah we'll always uh i guess we're an australian company and we'll, we'll try to keep it that way as much as we can be proud of your heritage australia in my opinion is, is a great country you highlighted the can do which i really like but most importantly to me ip protection ip theft is, is a growing problem you're right you can get all of your i's and your t dotted your your t's crossed you can get all your ip security and then you can go global so well done on that, and perhaps that is your your overall competitive advantage, along with your your can do attitude. When you when you have Ferrari, Ford, GM as customers, you're you're doing something right. And actually putting this conversation into context, what is the future of lightweight carbon fiber applications? It's a good question. I think the market is growing. You know, if you just look at the trends of um, how much carbon fiber is consumed in the world, it's just on an increasing trajectory for the last twenty. Or 50 years even and that will continue to grow it's um it's an amazing material it can be challenging to manufacture with and can be challenging to design with but once you get it right the advantages are, are definitely there and you see that in our example of of using carbon fiber it's something that obviously started in aerospace and aircraft and it's moving more and more into automotive so there's there's more and more examples of that and then things like the wind turbine industry they're the largest consumer of structural carbon fiber today, but we all expect that automotive will, will take that that position at some point in the future. So it's just something that, especially with the evolution of electric vehicles and how much they weigh because of batteries and electric motors, the drive to reduce weight in the rest of the vehicle is going to drive the increased adoption of, of composite componentry. Well, I'll put it this way. Carbon revolution is clearly poised for growth. And as we look to wrap up this insightful conversation, what would you like our listeners to take away with them today? The, the one takeaway is that, that anything is, is possible if you um, believe in it and, and, and it is a fundamentally good technology. So I think that's, that's one takeaway. And, and second, the second thing is that um, adoption of technology takes time. So there will always be naysayers that say things can't be done. But if you look at any automotive technology, it can take 15 to 20 years for something to become mainstream and carbon fiber wheels are, are on that path and are being adopted. But in, in 20 years time, uh, I think there won't be many people questioning the merits of the technology. It'll just be um, like air conditioning or multi-valve engines or four-wheel disc brakes or electric power steering, these things all eventually make their way to be mainstream. So that's what we're aiming for. Um, and, um, yeah, that's, that's probably the takeaway, I think. Yeah, well, you're well on your way because, as you said, anything is possible because today is tomorrow, tomorrow is today, and the future is lightweight carbon fiber wheels. Ashley, thank you so much for coming on SAE tomorrow today. Really enjoy the conversation. Thanks, Grayson. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for listening to SAE Tomorrow Today. If you've enjoyed this episode and would like to hear more, please kindly rate, review, and let us know what topics you'd like for us to explore next. On next week's episode, we'll chat with Chet Druna, Ford Next Head of Strategy and Business Planning Ford Motor Company, and Kristen Welch, Ford Next Strategy and Operations Ford Motor Company. On the episode, we will discuss how Ford Next is investing in and shaping the future of mobility. SAE International makes no representations as to the accuracy of the information presented in this podcast. The information and opinions are for general information only. SAE International does not endorse, approve, recommend, or certify any information, product, process, service, or organization presented or mentioned in this podcast.